Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Come, let us praise the Lord. For God has done wonderful things for us. Come, let us praise the Lord. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Good morning. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and on behalf of our pastor, Nijai Cho, we welcome all of you to Oxen Hills in-person and virtual worship service this Sunday. Can you imagine that is already November? It also happens to be All Saints Sunday, a day when we remember all our loved ones that passed in the past year. Oxen Hill is a multicultural church family, and um, everyone, no matter their race, creed, color, or sexual orientation, is welcome here. Is there anyone here this morning, either in person or on Zoom, that's worshiping with us on the, for the first time? If you're in the sanctuary, you can raise your hand if you want to introduce yourself. If not, for those of you, for those of you on um, Zoom, if you put your information in the chat field, we would appreciate it. Brothers and sisters, our Bible study class is currently studying a book entitled Claiming Identity. We have such a great time. I wish you would join us, some of you. Last month, I told you about the peril that exiled Jews faced in the Persian, Persian kingdom over 2,000 years ago and how God delivered them from the hands of their enemies. Today, in this country and around our, the world, many of us face peril from for, from uh, would-be dictators or tyrants. But Lamentations 3, verses 22 to 23, reminds us that because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. His, compassion, his compassions never fail. They're new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. So let's take courage, brothers and sisters, in Christ. Because in addition, Psalm 30 tells us, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And I feel so joyful this morning, brothers and sisters, because of all the promises Jesus makes to us in the Bible. He promised never to leave us or forsake us. He promised to work everything out for our good. Let us continue to trust in him and his promises, and let us continue to speak out against hatred and intolerance at every opportunity. And let us also pray for those among us who are being misled every day. Remember, God is still in control. Have a blessed week, family, and thank you. Lord, everybody, praise the Lord. Let's just jump to your feet this morning and give God a hand clap of praise because this is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, we can do better. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. 
the Bible declares, seek the joy and peace of God, for God blesses us, giving us joy, rest, and blessedness as we lean on his everlasting arms. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leading on the everlasting homes. What a blessedness, what a peace in mind, leading on the everlasting homes. Leaning on Jesus, safe and secure from all around. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting homes. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. Mighty God, we give you thanks today. We can lean on your everlasting arms. Mighty God, how sweet to talk in this pilgrim, even though we have every season of our life. We're still dancing and singing and then praise your glorious name in this holy Sunday. Oh Lord, we gather this morning in praise and thanksgiving for wonderful things you have done for us. And we can be able to lean on your arms, rest in your cares. So we thank you. We love you, oh God. We bring our heart full of joy and thanksgiving. And also we bring our heart. Sometimes we fall in many ways. So we're asking your forgiveness upon us. And also we're asking you to fill us, our heart, with the Holy Spirit so that we can continue to dance and continue to singing songs for your glory. 
we come here together seeking your healing, your restorations, and your blessing upon our lives, O oh God. We have a tendency to wander in wilderness of our own creating. When opportunities to serve you, to make a commitment to your service are given, we consult our calendars to see if there is anything else we have to do. We place our needs and our schedules before our service to you. Help us to reorder our priorities. Help us to look again at the wonderful opportunities you give us to be of service to you by working with others and reaching out to heal and help. Bring us to the light of your love once again and heal our wounded soul. Mighty God, as you hear our prayers, our petition and supplications, we ask your special blessings, your wisdoms, your guidance upon our elections. Please give us the discernment to choose right reader for these nations. How is important for us to select right reader for you that impact the whole world of peace and justice? So, mighty God, please guide us, our leaders of the nations, and bless their heart to discern your will. And also we asking your prayers upon our loved ones who are seeking your healing mercy and your grace. At this moment, someone who are receiving hospital treatment, just like a sister Roboras Corrigan's and John's Corrigan's, they are wondering how long, oh God, so, mighty God, please listen to their cries of pains. Please listen to those who are fighting with cancers and physical illness and disease, who are suffering from their broken relationships. They wonder where is true peace. Please let them know that you are there for them. Let them leaning on your everlasting arms so they can have true peace and joy. They can have restorations. Mighty God, we offer special prayer for those who are here today to set apart their time to praise you, glorify you in this time of holy, sacred time. Fill us with your holy power so that we can dance and sing our songs with a wholeheartedly so that many people can see your light through our presence, through our word and actions. And we thank you that you listen our prayers. Now, as children of God, we offer our prayers saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those trespasses against us. And let us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, church. The first lesson is found in Ruth, chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. And I'm reading from the Common English Bible. The family in Moab. During the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. A man with his wife and two sons went from Bethlehem of Judah 
to dwell in the territory of Moab. The name of that man was Elimelech. The name of his wife was Naomi, and the names of, the, of his two sons were Malon and Chilion. They were Ephratites from Bethlehem in Judah. They entered the territory of Moab and settled there. But Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. Then only she was left along with her two sons. They took wives for themselves, Moabite women. The name of the first was Orpah, and the name of the second was Ruth. And they lived there for about 10 years. But both of the sons, Malon and Chilion, also died. Only the woman was left without her two children and without her husband. Then she arose along with her daughters-in-law to return from the field of Moab, because while in the territory of Moab, she had heard that the Lord had paid attention to his people by providing food for them. She left the place where she had been, and her two daughters-in-law went with her. They went along the road to return to the land of Judah. Naomi said to her daughters-in-law, Go turn back, each of you, to the household of your mother. May the Lord deal faithfully with you, just as you have done with the dead and with me. May the Lord provide for you so that you may find security, each woman in, in the household of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voices and wept. But they replied to her, no, instead we will return with you to your people. Naomi replied, turn back, my daughters. Why would you go with me? Will there again be sons in my womb that they would be husbands for you? Turn back, my daughters. Go, I am too old for a husband. If I were to say that I have hope, even if I had a husband tonight, and even more, if I were to bear sons, would you wait until they grow up, or till they grew up? Would you refrain from having a husband? No, my daughters. This is more bitter for me than for you, since the Lord's will has come out against me. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth stayed with her. Naomi said, look, your sister-in-law is returning to her people and to her gods. Turn back after your sister-in-law. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to abandon you to turn back from falling after you. Wherever you go, I will go, and wherever you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord do this to me, and more, as I, and more so if even death separates me from you. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped speaking to her about it. This is the word of the Lord. Okay, well, this is a children's and news time, so I need one volunteers. So, um, Sister Barbara Hill-Jones, I need to uh, uh, read this one. Okay, not yet. Uh, yes, anybody knows about Ten Commandments? Anybody recite Ten Commandments? What is the first commandment? Yeah, you got it. What about Second Commandment? <laughs> you guys know First Commandment? <laughs> Block out your memory? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So what does it mean you shall have no other gods before me? There's only one God. Any other things? What did you say? Don't make any images. Don't adore anything. Oh, okay, okay. 
Oh, well, thank you so much. Don't order any images. So anybody remember that commandment? Come on. Hey, <laughs> what's going on here? Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I think it's, we have to remember ourselves what are the 10 commandments. But you forget just you want you know one you one command first commandment and <laughs> okay. Sister Barbara Hell Jones, would you read for us to put the ten commandment? Yes. Number one, you shall have no other gods before me. Number two, you shall not make for yourself an idol. Number three, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Number four, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Okay, stop there. So she just read four commandments, right? And among the Ten Commandments, one, two, three, four. Well, I just want to share with you, number one, we can say different ways. The first commandment, love God more than anything else. Well, sisters, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Manya said that don't adorn any image. But first commandment, love God more than anything else. That is the first commandment in another word, right? And second one is that don't make anything more important than God. That is the second commandment. And third one is always say God's name with love and respect. And fourth commandment, honor the Lord by resting on the Sabbath day, right? That is the fourth commandment. What it tells you? What these commandments tells you? Everybody say something, but I cannot hear from their point. Maybe Jew worshipers cannot hear you too. God should be your first focus. God should be a first focus. Amen to that. Okay. When we look at the cross right here, the cross is a vertical line, right? This is four commandment that, you know, this vertical line signifies the relationship between God and humanity, which God has a four commandment, one, two, three, four, right? It says, you shall have no other gods before me, you shall not make for yourself an idol. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep, to keep it holy. This is about the God and humanity. So it signifies the vertical line of the relationship between God and humanity, right? And then between five through 10 commandments, Sister Barbara Hill Jones, would you read it? If somebody remember and recite it, you can raise your hands, you can do it, certainly. Number five. Correct. Uh, correct, okay. Honor your father and mother, okay. Number, Number six. You shall not murder and kill, right? Good, okay. Number seven. You shall not commit adultery. Okay, good. What about number eight? You shall not steal. Good job. Number nine. Amen. <laughs> that is Delia. Good job. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. Okay, good. And number ten. Yeah, you shall not covet, right? So you know that uh, from five to 10 commandments, what these commandments tells you? Maria? It's the law we, sh you sh we should live by, okay? Love your neighbors as yourselves. Good, Sister Vivian. Well, look at the cross of the vertical line it signifies between God and humanity and how we can have a relationship with God. We put God priority in everything we do, right? 
And then in a, the horizontal line of the cross, it signifies the relationship between human beings. That means that the, you shall love your neighbors as yourselves. And then first greatest commandment in the 10 commandment, one, two, three, four, it signifies the relationship human, you know, between humanity and God, which means the whole Bible tells us you shall love your God with all your heart, all your mind, and all, all your souls, and, and all your strengths. So remember that when you're looking at the cross, the, it signifies between God and humanity, how you love God. And the horizontal line of the uh, cross, it signifies between human beings, you shall love your neighbors as yourselves. Amen? Amen. So, well, yeah. <laughs> so you guys forget because of that? Well, I, in a, I command you, please recite the Ten Commandments. And especially you remember the human relationship from five to 10 commandment, but you forget the from first to fourth commandment. That is the relationship between God and humanity. So make sure that our Sunday school kids can memorize that 10 commandments. So hopefully I can test you again next week, <laughs> whether you remember or not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, it tells us the, our relationship between God and humanity and between humanity relationships. So let us remember God's love and how God commands us to love God and to love others as ourselves. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks today. You give us a Ten Commandment. Sometimes we easily forget we overlooked, but thank you for reminding us again how we can love you with our whole heart, mind, and strength, how we can love others as ourselves. As we Christians, followers of Jesus Christ, we always remember your love so that the, all people can experience your love through us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning, Oxen Hill. Please stand as you are able for the gospel. Today's reading is Mark 12, chapter, verses 28 through 34. I will be reading from the Common English Bible. God's most important command. One of the legal experts heard their dispute and saw how well Jesus answered them. He came over and asked him, which commandment is the most important of all? Jesus replied, the most important one is Israel, listen, our God is the one Lord, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is, you will love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. The legal expert said to him, well said teacher, you have truthfully said that God is one and there is no other beside him. And to love God with all of the heart, a full understanding and all of one's strength and to love one's neighbor as oneself is much more important than all kinds of ent entirely burned offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered with wisdom, he said to him, you aren't far from God's kingdom. After that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. You may be seated. Let us pray. O oh, holy God, speak to each of us. and enlighten our heart to receive your word for healing and encouragement. Inspire us by the power of the Holy Spirit and rekindle the heart of your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So how do you define love? We're just talking about the love or a law. It's ten command is the ten commandment is about the law or love. Well, let me ask you different questions. What is your love language? Heart? Okay. How do you express love to those closest to you? Okay, so when we know our loved one's love language, our relationship often grows stronger and our relationship is more meaningful and happier. We are created to love and by love. In pre-marriage counseling, I often invite the couples to take a love language test and some other test, you know, to, to know them better. The concept of the five love languages was developed by Dr. Gray Chapman. Have you ever heard about him? He's author and counselor who helps the people from lasting relationships. His book, The Five Love Languages, which was the New York Times bestseller list in 2007, outlines how different people with unique personalities give and receive love in different ways. By learning to recognize these propensities in ourselves and in our loved ones, we can identify the root of conflict and mature our relationships. So the five love languages are, anybody knows? The first one is act of service. Applies for those who feel loved when their loved ones does thoughtful things for them, such as cleaning and cooking, run errands. And second is receiving gifts. Speaks to those who feel cherished when they receive thoughtful gifts. And third, quality time applies for people who feel loved when they receive undivided attention and spend time together with their loved one. And fourth, word of affirmations applies to those who feel loved when their loved one expresses affection through spoken words, praise, and encouragement. And fifth, physical touch include the physical expression of love, such as hugs and kisses and holding hands. So according to this framework, what is your love language? Can you identify your love language? It applies any, anyone to your... Uh, so yours is a physical touch, Barbara Hale Johnson. Grace? All of them. All of them? <laughs> okay, really? <laughs> okay. Well, let me identify some of them. Do you feel most loved when your loved ones tell you, I love you? Or praise something you did? I think it's, that is one of the uh, word of affirmations. Like, uh, I love you, honey. I love you, my little child. Something like that. Well, you did a great job. When you do that, you know, the, your partner, your loved one feel loved. That is word of affirmation. 
what about when loved ones surprise you with your meaningful gift for your birthday or your wedding anniversaries or some occasions or surprises some gifts do you feel loved yes yes yeah of course so receiving gifts okay and what about when loved ones do uh errand or cleaning house and cooking for you it's kind of act of service well my forte is act of service but my husband's is different than mine my husband's is a word of affirmation when i say oh honey you did a great job or i love you so that he felt love from me when I said that because his forte is word of affirmations. Mine is the act of service. Or someone uh, you know, hold your hands while working and hug you, kiss you. Maybe someone feel loved through physical touch. Reflecting on these questions might reveal your love language. Remember, your loved one's language may not be the same as yours because we are all different, come from different cultures and families and upbringing. If we can learn to love others in the way that most resonate with them, they feel happier and more valued in their relationships. While this framework is a helpful way to express love and enhance intimate relationships, but it does not give perfection in love either. It does not solve human brokenness, conflict, and emptiness, because this love is conditional and depends on who you, your loved ones are. It helps a lot. It gives you a last long relationship, much peace. But some love language expression can easily fade away and do not last longer. So we must ask the questions, how do we define love? How do you define love? Would you say it again? Just honor, trust. Trust. just honor and trust. Okay, okay, got you. Well, let's dig into what, how do, what, you know, do we define the love. In today's gospel, a scribe asks Jesus, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answers, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is on, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Well, here Jesus summarizes the whole entire Bible and the Ten Commandments as a call to love. Here it defines the love with the Ten Commandments and entire Bible because God is love. So what is God's love language for us? God wants us to put God first in our lives this is foundational to our identity as Christians. It means trusting and depending upon God in all things because we are created to love God and love each other. The Ten Commandments we just recite illustrate God's love language. The first commandment, you shall have no other gods before me, which means it instructs us to put God First, in all things, this is the first God's love language to spend quality time with us through our worship and through our presence. The second commandment, you shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything that warns against idolatry. 
somebody said, Manya said, don't adorn any image before God. When we prioritize anything, money and power and fame or even family over God, that thing becomes an idol. God does not want to be in the second place. God wants to be in the first place in our heart, in our mind and soul, and in all our effort and time. Third commandment, you shall not misuse the name of Lord your God. But we often manipulate God's names to judge others and bring war and violence, injustice, in terms of our partial justifications. So we must be mindful not to use God's name in vain. And fourth commandment, remember the Sabbath day to keep holy. This is also love language. To keep the Sabbath means that we must set apart our time warning for God and rest in God's care. It means we must spend quality time with God with our praise and thanksgiving and then worshiping to receive God's restorations and blessings in order to have much fees our relationship with God with the horizontal relationships. The central theme of the Ten Commandments is love. The first four commandments are about our relationship with God and teaching us to love God with our whole heart mind and soul and strength, while the last six are about the relationship with people to love our neighbors as ourselves. If we turn away from this commandment, we distance ourselves from God's love, from God's blessings. Often in our search for fulfillment, we turn to worldly things that ultimately leave us empty. Spiritual malnutrition is a common source of a falter of our faith. To love God fully is to nurture these relationships as God has established for our well-being. God is the one who created our relationships, who is our father, who is our mother, who is our siblings, we didn't have a choice when we were born. But God gave us freedom of choice to love God or not. In Greek, there are four different words for love. Anybody knows? In Greek, there is four different for love. Yeah, agape, you guys know that, <laughs> okay. The eros, okay. Okay, so first one is pilia, it's the love between friends. Speak to a personal bond of attachment. Second is eros, it's a romantic love with passion and intimacy, often referring to the love between spouse or partners. Third is storage, describes the familial love between parents and children. Fourth, you write agape, is unconditional love, which is God's love for all in Jesus Christ. There is no condition there. Agape is the highest form of love. Agape is God's love language for us. While pileo, arrows, and stories are conditional, applying to specific relationship, who is your father, who is your spouse, who is your friends, agape is unconditional, no matter who you are. Paul describes agape love and asks to intimate this agape love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the love chapter. In John chapter 3, verse 16, we hear the famous the Bible verses. For God so loved the world, and he gave his only one son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, 
but have eternal life. Romans chapter 5, verse 8 affirms this love. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. As we recite during the Holy Communion. The Holy Communion, Ten Commandment, is all for God's love language for us. Today, as we celebrate Reformation Sunday and All Saints Sunday, we remember the legacy of love for God and others that has shaped the church for over 500 years. Reformation and All Saints Sunday remind us to continually renew our commitment to loving God and one another. Our Methodist founders, John and Charles Wesley, reformed their love to God and others and showed us great examples. As we remember our loved ones who have gone before us and cherish the love we shared by lighting candles on this All Saints Sunday. Thank you for those who setting up the, these candles, Patty and Barbara Hell Johnson, Mary. We shared by lighting candles on this All Saints Sunday. We are so grateful to God that God loves us unconditionally in Jesus Christ to save us from our sin and from our eternal death. Though our human love is imperfect, conditional, God's love is unconditional and perfect love, and God's grace covers us through the blood of the Jesus Christ and granting us an eternal and joyful relationship with God and with one another. Jesus teaches God's unconditional love language through his life, death, and resurrections which is grace. So when we practice this love with all, all our heart, with all our souls, with all our mind, with all our strength and effort and time, we are sanctified in God's love. God delights our love language and wants to bless us beyond our measure. If we truly practice this love language, Dear siblings in Christ, what is your love language to God? If God were to ask, do you love me more than anything else? How would you answer? How would you respond? The greatest commandment is God's love for all God's creations. God calls us to align our heart, mind, and souls, and strength wholeheartedly with God who first loved us. So may we continually seek to love God and one another more deeply in embracing the call to love as Christ loves us. Amen? Amen. Now, I would like to invite uh, the communion servers Please come forward.
Christ our Lord invite to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God, one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cries of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were as sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Let us recite the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the point of Pilate, was crucified and died and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit and Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. In love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptisms of his suffering, death, resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You have delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made us your new covenant. By water, and the Spirit, when the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit.
on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take it, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Your Holy Spirit on earth and gather the here and on this gift of the bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Because there is one love, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one love, the bread which we break, is your sharing in the body of Christ. The cup which we sharing is the blood of the Jesus Christ. as God demonstrates God's love language to all of us. God invite to Christ's table to feast heavenly banquet. No matter who you are, God's love is unconditional and sacrificial love. No matter what you have done, no matter what our language, what skin color, no matter what, God invites all into Christ's table to receive God's grace and God's love. So we invite you all to receive this God's amazing love. As we are receiving these gifts, bread and wines, um, we can make a two lines and we can take one time after we distribute this bread and wine together. And the sister Elaine will play the music for us.
Is given for you. Like the church says, thanks be to God. The blood of the Jesus Christ shed for you. Like the church says, Thanks be to God. Please join me Thanksgiving prayer. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now these times, as we celebrate All Saints Sundays, when we named our loved ones, Brother Steve will ring the bells. And for those um, who would you like to light the candles for your loved ones, please make sure you sit behind the Sister Patty and Dave at the front, so we can save some time. And if you don't have any loved ones, Sister Perry will light the candle for them. And Sister Barbara Harold Johns will call their names to remember their love. Gary Schnurl. Debbie Burrell. Emma Lee Moreland. Lois Cordell. Don Johnson. Clinton Freeman, Judith Ann Beatty, John Cecil Price, John Bowman, Frank Capu Capuano. Iris Daniel Alton Green 
Janet K. Cox. Julius Weeks. Tim Berkeley. Geraldine Johnson. Gilbert Kirby. Kazelle Mutombo. Logan Spate. Lori Honey. Matty Mathaya. Barbara Chase. Robert Lewis Mapson. Robert McKinley. Joseph McIver. Abraham S. Davina Jr. S. William Nats. Violet Pink. Bobby Charles. Robert Marshall. Mary Margaret Peggy Clark. Linda Bowman. Dakemba Mutombo. Ronnie Wiley. Lynn McFarland. William L. Gaskins. Joy Kino Gamino. Anna McLean. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for the tremendous sacrifice and love made by those who have gone before us. Bless the memory of, of their saint. May we learn how to work wisely from their example of faith, dedication, and worship, and love. And we give all the in glory and honor to you. You make us to be your children through your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
As we continue in praise and worship, let's stand all over the church and join our voices together as we sing the great hymn of faith, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine, Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit was in his blood. This is my story, this is my soul. Raising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Raising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Vision of perfection, no birth on my sight. Angel descending, bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is that rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. And you may be seated. As we cherish the love to our all saints, we give thanks to God, God's unconditional love. God says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So let us give our heart and hold selves to God with our tithes and offering. While we are doing that, uh, after that, we can singing songs, praise God from all blessings, doxology together. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us 
us pray. Loving God, Jesus called us to love God with our whole heart, mind and soul and strength, love others as ourselves. Purpose us through our giving. Use this offering to build your kingdom. Bring comfort to the grieving, light to those in darkness. May our contributions reflect your love and grace, transforming our lives and community into place of hope and renewal. Let the church says, Amen, Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. I would like to highlight the missions and ministries at Oxon Hill. An update to the building issues was provided in the bulletin. I invite you all to read this important information. Our bread ministry reaches out to over 200 people in our community every week. We need the hands, feet, and voice of Jesus Christ to help those in need. If you can help, please contact Lynette Cameron or Valerie Harrison. If you are interested in singing with the adult choir, please see Manny Legospi. He would love to have you join them. Please remember that Sunday school meets every Sunday via Zoom at 9.20 a.m. Youth group Sunday school meets the first Sunday of every month. Uh, the Value Identity Purpose Praise Worship meets uh, Sunday evenings at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Uh, dance exercise class meets Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Our Wednesday Bible study meets on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. via Zoom. We are studying the Bible-based uh, book, Claiming Identity. We would love to have you join us. Pervine Gathering is meeting this Thursday evening at 7 p.m. via Zoom. And Coffee and Connection meets every third Sunday of the month at 8 p.m. via Zoom. I would like to note that Pastor Cho will be taking time off from November 5th uh, through November 29th to focus on her thesis. Please keep her in prayer, and during this time, we will have guest pastors during this period. And if you need pastoral attention, please contact me. Uh, speaking of our pastor, um, October was designated as Pastor Appreciation Month, and I would like to share a few words from our, our Bishop Latrell Easterling regarding this important observance. Uh, the word of God in Isaiah proclaims, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news, proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Paraphrasing the bishop's message, we set aside a month to show appreciation to our clergy, but this is hardly enough time to express the thanks and appreciation that their faithfulness deserves. Pastors rise every morning to answer God's call, work late in service to God. While we see the public face of their ministry on Sundays, they also labor in isolation, reading, preparing, studying, and praying. Pastors lead us to compassion, patience, resilience, forgiveness, reconciliation, and peace. They are creative and steadfast, offering hope for tomorrow. They experience joy in serving God, but also experience pain and silent tears. The bishop asks us to express our sincere gratitude and let our pastor know how much we appreciate her ministry. At Oxon Hill, we've asked you to pray daily for Pastor Cho and express your gratitude to her. We express you, we ask you to consider inviting a guest to worship with us as this is an important part of her ministry. Consider contributing to the church renovation fund in honor of Pastor Cho and further consider attending Sunday school, Wednesday Bible study, prayer vine gatherings, or give your time to one of the church's ministries to show uh, your support for our pastor. Finally, I'd like to read the following prayer from our bishop. Holy and loving God, you are great and greatly to be praised. There is none other like you, and we humble ourselves before your presence. I lift before you those whom you have called into set apart ministry, those you have gifted in grace to be living vessels of faith, hope, and love. Bless them and meet their needs according to your riches and glory. Bless them and heal them from any wounds, disappointments, or pains arising from their servant leadership. Bless them and fill them with joy. May they know this day that they are at the center of your heart and love beyond measure. Give them a double portion of your anointing for the journey ahead and grant them everlasting peace. Amen and amen. Pastor Cho, this is our prayer for you, and we thank you for your service to God at Oxon Hill. And Christina is cleaning for me.
Hi Again Church. Um, as you may know, we did an we we made a Lenten booklet earlier in the year, and we're in the process of con uh, finishing our Advent booklet. So first of all, I want to thank all of you who chose to write for the Advent booklet 2024. And um, last time we we selected uh, seven people plus Pastor Cho to be on the back cover of the Advent of the Lenten booklet. And we're doing the same thing again for our Advent booklet. We've selected seven people that we would like to uh, put their pictures on the back. And I think you know who you are. Socorro, did you receive the email? Okay. So for those of you who don't have a picture to send to me for the booklet, I will be taking pictures outside once service is over. So if you want to do that, just let me know. If not, go ahead and send me a copy of your favorite uh, portrait, and we'll put it on the back. Thank you again. Let's stand all over the church and sing together, standing on the promises of Christ my King. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let its praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fail. When the holy stones of God and fear us fail. By the living word of God I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises of God my Savior. Standing on the promises. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound with Him eternally by love's strong cord, overwhelming daily with the Spirit's sword. Standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises I cannot fall, listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises, standing on the promises, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing on the promises, standing I'm standing on the promises of God. Amen. Dear Oxen here, receive blessings. As we sang, standing on the promise of God, let us stand on God's foot and God's care. God loves us unconditionally, so let's go out to share God's love to those whom we meet. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God's countenance shine upon you. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let the church says, Amen. Amen. So
me soon. We are going to see the king. So then very soon. We are going to see the king. So then very soon. We are going to see the king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to see the king. No more crying there. We are going to see the king. No more crying there. We are going to see the king. No more crying there. We are going to see the king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to see the king. No more dying there. We are going to see the king. No more dying there. We are going to see the king. No more dying there. We are going to see the king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to see the king.